Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. Today, we're talking about actionable SaaS metrics for customer success. And uh, we're Start Deliver, and we're doing this together with our friends at Chart Mogul. Uh, I'm Johan Nilsson. Uh, I'm the CEO and founder of Start Deliver. Um, and just to make sure that you uh, don't have to ask later, you will get all the material from this presentation. We'll share that with you, both the recording and also the actual presentation. Um, here are some of my contact details. If you want to reach out afterwards, I'm happy to answer all questions you have. And since this is a live webinar, I just want to remind everyone to uh, post questions. Do that along the way. We will have some time in the end to cover the questions. You do that easiest through the Q&A tab in the Zoom app here. So don't forget to ask questions. Uh, we'll uh, try to cover everything in the end. Uh, just a few things. So start deliver. Uh, we are uh, we make a customer success uh, platform, purpose built for customer success. So uh, basically, we uh, what what sales use the CRM for, customer success teams can use start deliver for. Uh, and I'm really happy to have uh, a guest here, uh, Ingmar, uh, VP customer success. Uh, welcome to uh, the webinar. Well, hello, Jan. I'm glad uh, to join. Glad to be here. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I am um, been running uh, the success team um, at Chart Mobile. I'm also uh, GM uh, of North America. I also have my contact details uh, here for you. So I'm happy to continue uh, the conversation after this webinar as well. Yeah. At uh, Chart Mobile, we build um, the world's leading subscription analytics platform that helps SaaS businesses measure, understand, and grow their recurring revenue. You can, uh, with Chart Mogul, import uh, your revenue data from your billing system or systems, and uh, then also uh, enrich it as well with further uh, segmentation uh, data. Um, Chart Mogul then helps you to compute all uh, your um, revenue metrics, uh, such as MRR, uh, LTV, um, churn rates, and then um, take those also into um, other places where we allow you to output that data into um, many uh, various like uh, data so via various data sources. Chart mobile, essentially it helps you understand uh, the health of your business and it helps you to um, have actionable uh, insights using your uh, revenue data to make decisions to grow your business. Oh, yeah. And um, I mean, uh, we come from um, the operational side where customer success team work with, with, uh, with customers uh, we, every day, every week. Uh, but we, we have uh, our paths uh, in, intersect in these uh, key metrics that SaaS companies look at. And uh, I talk to a lot of SaaS companies and everybody knows that churn is really important to uh, keep track of and retention rates. But it's almost uh, easier said than done. And um, I think that's one of the topics we have for this uh, webinar to dig a little bit deeper and uh, help people out here. What, what are the metrics and uh, why are they sometimes hard to, to get, get to? Yes, and um, this is um, a challenge that also between uh, Start Deliver that um, Johan and I share when we talked about uh, this before the webinar where we encounter many of the um, same problems when it comes to working with data on the side of Start Deliver, more focused on customer data and on the side of Chart Mogul, focused more on revenue data, even though there's quite a bit of overlap where it's also useful to have revenue data and Start Deliver and vice versa. It's useful to have customer uh, data to segment on in uh, Chart Mogul. So a common challenge is um, data being fragmented, uh, living in different places. So having um, these um, uh, then silos where you might have um, some data that's in, uh, tracked uh, manually uh, in one system, uh, or you might uh, have a legacy billing system, multiple billing systems. And um, seeing the whole picture, you might too have to export reports and um, like put them together. And then there's the also, of course, the access component when you're 
trying to share uh, data across the team, being able to work together um, and actually drive goals, like everyone has to be able to access the same uh, data and get that uh, 360 on. And this is something I'm sure like you're dealing with quite a bit too, Johan, right? Yeah, definitely. And, um, and and we also see that sometimes you, I mean, sure, in some, some cases are, it's, a, it's lagging as well. It's a lagging indicator of mm. things that you should have done earlier. And sometimes people do the analysis and then they realize, oh, we should have thought of things that we should have changed things. We should have done things, things differently earlier on and so on. So it's also important um, to, to what we do a lot is work on this leading indicators on health and are they engaged, are they used in the platform and so on. Uh, but, um, but still, most teams are run by the and net revenue retention is like the North Star metric for most SaaS companies. Uh, and they follow up this, and I think it's uh, it's important to understand what's beneath and and what can, how can you measure and what 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 does these different metrics mean? So uh, yes. maybe we should uh, should clarify and discuss around uh, what what are these metrics that uh, that are common in customer success uh, in particular? Yes. Um, so um, to be all on the same uh, page here, so these are uh, some of the common formulas, and when we talk about yeah, churn as uh, uh, in customer success, we, we focus as as Johan mentioned more on revenue churn, but also customer churn. There's different ways to express um, revenue churn uh, here. So there's like a, a few different formulas that um, we'll touch on, like or metrics that we'll allude to in this presentation. So to be on the same page, I'm just going to quickly go through these. So customer churn, very simple just the customers that we, we lose over time. So if we look at the beginning of the period, we have 100 customers and then we lost, let's say 10% of those customers uh, at the end of the month, that would be a 10% churn rate. Then gross MR churn, the revenue um, that we're losing from customers that are both churning and contracting. And by contracting, we mean that they're giving us um, less uh, money um, that means their account is, is shrinking. Um, it could be that they're, they're removing seats or if it's a usage-based pricing model, they're using, using less. So we will have the best scenario is that, that you retain, you have uh, zero here and the worst case scenario is 100% lost. Then net MR churn rate um, here, this is something that's uh, offset uh, as you can see towards the end of the formula by expansion and reactivation, where this is uh, from our existing customers are paying more that are um, uh, like um, maybe uh, they're adding uh, additional seats. Um, uh, in our pricing model, we have revenue-based pricing. Um, they will make more money, uh, so we make more money. There's a reactivation, so that means uh, customers coming back that had an account with you before, and then this could actually result in a negative um, formula, a negative churn rate, it's called negative churn, which is like uh, a little counterintuitive because you have a minus in front, but if it's mm. like something, if you're gaining 2% from customers in a month, that would be minus mm. two on uh, negative yeah. churn. And then gross MR retention rate, now the retention rates. So this um, here, it could be, uh, never uh, bigger than um, 100% um, if you're retaining uh, all your revenue, net MR retention rate. Uh, this, um, again, it can go over sort of the inverse of, of net MR churn rate where you can go over 100% uh, there because of your customers um, expanding. Um, mm -hmm. So best of class uh, companies, um, SaaS companies, they have well, way over 100%, uh, some 110, 115. One looks at well established enterprise public companies' uh, net MR retention rates. And, and this is really interesting, I think, to um, since you, you collect a lot of these data points and um, you summarize this in reports. And uh, so, uh, what are like benchmarks? Uh, of course, it depends a little bit where you are and what type of product you have. But um, it's I think it's really interesting to 
to dig into. What, what can you compare to here? Yeah, Chad Mogul, we have um, data from uh, thousands of SaaS businesses and we've um, anonymized uh, this data and uh, we then did benchmarking um, with this data. And this is a report that was actually just released uh, the other day that is also now available to you. Um, this uh, particular example here, what we're looking at here is the um, gross MR churn rate segmented it's by ARPA bands. So you can see at the bottom, um, the, if we look at the, the first um, column, um, then that would be uh, less than 10 uh, ARPA. And ARPA, by that we mean average revenue per account. So it means that uh, those accounts and in, in this uh, data set would be paying less uh, than $10 uh, a month. And for that particular uh, band here, we're seeing that 8.9% um, uh, is a medium value. And across these different bands here, you can also see what the range is. And when yeah. we're, we're trying to understand what to aim for as a business and, and have ambitious goals, it's nice to be informed by what is an industry standard for uh, the type of business uh, that you run and also yeah. where you are at in, in the cycle of um, finding product market fit. Are you an early stage business? Are you um, a um, business that focuses on selling to, to other businesses? Uh, where are they in their stage? Are they enterprise businesses? Are they smaller businesses? Um, are they paying less money, more money? And this will all inform sort of where you would fall in this like benchmark data. And you can see there are quite some ranges here. Um, we're looking a little further down the line and where, where churn rates are lower, like even um, in the 100 to $250 average revenue per account range, it's like a range from 2.5% to 8.9%. But knowing like what the best in class businesses in in uh, this band would be able to do it. it it's quite helpful in, in trying to have realistic goals. And these are MRR churn rates. So on an, on an annual basis, the, this would be in a lot more, of course. Uh... Yes, that's a, that's a good point. And this is sort of, as a SaaS business, um, growth um, will slow down if churn is too high or over time. It's just a, a numbers game where um, if one has a, a customer churn rate of 5%, it means that you're losing 46% uh, uh, of your uh, customers annually. That's a lot to recover. And it means you would have to have quite a, a high volume of like new signups and reactivations to make up to that, to even um, like have an, an even number. And, and to grow further, you, you need to add even more customers. Yeah, that's uh, that's of course uh, a lot to recover there. Um, interesting. In, in this report, uh, you share more a lot more of, of these type of benchmarks. Um, yes, I'd like to encourage on... you to download yeah. it. Like um, it's available for free and it's um, quite extensive, so you can drill down a bit more. This is uh, one that I found was uh, general enough to be interesting for this audience, but you'll be able to find more specific data that might be helpful to you to uh, make actionable decisions. Yeah, because it is of course in, in, important to know, uh, compare to yourself to similar sizes of ARPA and similar size of uh, if you're enterprise or for SMB and so on. So what type of uh, SaaS product you have, uh, it would be interesting to benchmark your actual churn rate uh, to, to this report. I think that's, it's a good learning. Yes. And um, next, um, I'd like to go uh, a little bit into some, some stories. And these are stories uh, from our own data um, that, uh, that is our own company data of, of ChartMogul. Um, we are, of course, using ChartMogul uh, ourselves um, to measure our performance, uh, to, to set goals. We're a very uh, data-driven business. And um, this is our customer churn rate here. Um, since uh, 2019 and then up to uh, uh, close to the present moment, where you can see here that over time, we were able to reduce our uh, customer uh, churn rate quite a bit from being up there in the like 
five percent plus range uh, then coming down to being more in the three percent range and this is a makes a huge difference uh, for the growth uh, of the business and this was really um, like multiple uh, things that um, like helped us achieve that yeah. I'm going to mention them now on a high level and then we will go down and get a bit more specific so for us like what made the difference was really more of a, a team effort where this is often said and you might have heard that before that customer success is an organizational level goal and this is exactly how we perceived it throughout um, these changes where it was things like getting better a uh, product market fit where we are having really good feedback loops uh, with our customers we're getting a better understanding how are they using the product what are their pain points we're trying to solve them we're trying to help them get outcomes um, that they perceive as being valuable and then next uh, how do we uh, package these um, uh, plans that we have so focusing on pricing and packaging to uh, yeah. figure out how to uh, make that work so that customers are, are happy and have a good price to value alignment there then yeah. also product marketing and what type of customers are we actually um, attracting, uh, which yeah. like means you have to have an understanding of who are your customers uh, to be able to attract the right kind of customers. And that uh, is sometimes a bit uh, ambiguous in the early stages of a company yeah. uh, uh, life cycle. Then, I think uh, this is the yeah, please, yeah, sorry, but uh, I think it's uh, the power of, the, of to have data on things. It's that uh, you can you can have these uh, when, when you have clear data on how things are going, you can start improving and starting taking actions and looking at what can we do. I remember in my previous uh, companies, I, 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 we have looked too high level on on retention. And it's beneath the, the return, maybe the retention rate was good, but beneath we had too high churn in some cases, in some sub segments. And I think that's the, uh, well, I think we'll get to that as well, but important to, uh, to have data and the, dig into the data to make, be able to improve these uh, numbers because everybody wants to improve their churn and improve the retention rate, but uh, sometimes need to be, have the clarity that you get with data to, to do these things. Um, Absolutely. And like that's um, one specific example where we'll go to next, which is focusing on uh, account management. And um, this was something that we realized as we were growing bigger uh, as a company that we are getting accounts that were paying us quite a bit of money that were having a higher MRR that had uh, very specific uh, requirements and um, that we needed a, a team, a dedicated team that does a more traditional uh, success uh, management. Where in the beginning, we just had a super responsive customer support team. We also had a solutions team to help here and there with onboarding, but it wasn't, mm -hmm. um, we didn't have a dedicated account management team. And we started this about um, more than a couple of years ago uh, now. And our goal uh, initially was um, to just be a little bit over 100% um, there where I think we started off with maybe a 101.5% or, or something like that um, uh, net uh, revenue retention. And then this is um, an example of the last quarter of what we achieved where we actually had 108.4% um, revenue retention. And we've been improving this over time and we've been uh, increasing the targets and this uh, didn't happen by accident. Um, we measured this every quarter. You can see in the chart, this is how this would be broken down, where I can see by month um, uh, what the um, retention is. And this is also an example of negative churn, where you see there on the left-hand side, um, it's, it's a negative number. Um, and um, uh, for each of those months and for those three months combined, it's a, that is the 108.4%. Uh, revenue uh, retention rate where we were working um, with customers uh, specifically doing a handover from sales to customer success and yeah. uh, then figuring out how do we onboard them in the best way customers of this profile of this size 
Uh, we built out a training program over time that uh, really takes them through very specific steps. And um, we also nurturing these customers uh, over time where we're doing adoption uh, training. And we have also a customer uh, success platform where we're doing health scoring and where we're looking at um, like indicators where a customer um, is not getting the full value out where there are like risks that we can actually address in real time. So this team is laser focused on that particular uh, goal and uh, yeah. it shows in the data over time. Yeah. Well, and I really want to integrate what you said there about, I mean, improving churn and, and, and doing customer success is a company-wide effort to, to really make an impact. Um, if you realize that you could improve churn or if you can do more expansion, it usually takes more than just a customer success team to realize that. And you mentioned uh, onboarding and handovers from sales. Uh, also, maybe sometimes it's about sales closing the right, bringing in the right type of customers. But it's also down to uh, this, uh, which is like uh, pricing and plans to, to really look into that. Um, which I, I also know you, you did a, a lot of work in that area. Yes, and that is like this uh, story here, what you see in this uh, chart, which um, shows you, uh, you see on the left-hand side, um, that is um, a legacy plan that we had in 2014, uh, which was called the uh, Pro Plan. And uh, you can see the plan, uh, so customers being added to it, so it, it's growing. And then uh, at some point there in 2016, we discontinued this plan. And we've, we've been, over time, we've been experimenting with pricing and packaging quite a bit, especially in the early days, changing plans. But we kept customers on this legacy plan where um, you can see over time then this um, cohort of those customers that were on that plan are more or less uh, paying the same. We're clearly like not succeeding with this plan to grow revenue from this uh, customer cohort in this plan. And it, it's even a decline uh, of revenue, a slight decline. And then we decided when we released our um, revenue-based pricing um, in uh, 2018 that we were going to figure out a way how we um, can sunset um, the pricing of these uh, old legacy customers. And we were then migrating them um, through the customer success team uh, in batches over time to our, our new pricing. And you can see how on the right-hand side, the revenue is slowly being activated in this other plan and it's decreasing in this legacy plan as, as people are switching over. And by the end of the project, which took um, quite, a, quite a bit of time, I, uh, it's like way over a year um, where we worked in small batches uh, through this with all the customers, but we retained um, a good um, revenue retention where it was about 130% uh, uh, originally by the time we completed the project. And you can see going further on the right, the impact on the business mm. where these yeah. accounts then now are paying about twice as much now as, as they used to pay. And they're still uh, growing and expanding as they're on these new plans. One of them is self-service plan that gets automatically upgraded based on the revenue that is being tracked in our customers' accounts, and then mm -hmm. volume plans for very large customers that went to custom uh, pricing from these uh, old plans that we renew every year. Uh, no, I think this is a really interesting uh, story, uh, and and uh, and this is the other side of it. Yes, uh, so the, the uh, um, you can see here the drop off in, in terms of account retention was quite mm. high um, and yeah. uh, half the customers lost. Uh, it sounds bad, but it's really not the end of the world uh, because uh, the exercise itself, it made us talk to customers individually that came in self-service, a lot of them, where mm. some of them, they came into the business in the early days where we um, tried to sell to any subscription business. And yeah. we actually found through this exercise of pricing migration that SaaS was really our sweet spot and that we should focus there and we can deliver yeah. the most value uh, to those customers. So 
we're able in this process to see who are our customers that will be willing to use everything Chartmogo has to offer. And we, we will work with them to get them there. And this sometimes took time where we, we did build some new features uh, in this process. We did work through onboarding customers that weren't fully onboarded, um, getting yeah. other team members into using our software and really figuring out in this conversation, rather than just asking for more money, how can we as, uh, add more value to those uh, accounts and, and doing this uh, like in batches over time. And um, many of these accounts that we lost were like really bad fit customers where they were sometimes mm. consuming disproportionate resources of our customer service team where this customer service team was sort of the band-aid to uh, keep those customers uh, around. Uh, and maybe at times in the earlier days, engineering was doing all sorts of little fixes and customizations that we would never do anymore nowadays. So it was really um, better for those customers to seek a solution that was more what they were looking for. And that made this project in our mind successful, both from um, like the revenue side, but then yeah. the customers that we had left that were much happier customers that got more value out of chart mobile. Yeah. So if you if you looked on purely on uh, purely on customer churn, it looked bad. But if you looked at revenue, uh, it was actually uh, a, a huge improvement. Exactly. And that brings us, um, as we're already getting close to time here, to yes. some some key takeaways here uh, from this uh, presentation of what can you actually do to um, improve account health and improve retention. So this is sort of in the order that we uh, executed on this over time as we grew the business from early stage to being more mature, focusing first on understanding your customer personas. Who are your customers that you're serving? Who is the buyer? Uh, who are the other key people that uh, get value? And then documenting those use cases, making stories out of them that you can use for social proof, both in your marketing, uh, in your sales cycle, but also um, when you're working with your customers and your customer success team to be able to give them inspiration. Look like this is what you can do. And this is how other businesses have done it. And yeah. then like customer journey mapping, like uh, looking at you know, what happens in, in each stage uh, that a customer uh, is in uh, the life cycle, like we're under understanding um, what is onboarding completion uh, look like uh, uh, for a customer, um, being able to like clearly define that, um, being able to like uh, even from discovery uh, all the way to when an account is really mature, not just looking at customer success per se, but trying to create it for the whole organization where you understand how do we work well together with marketing, um, sales, and customer success um, to create um, a customer journey that uh, essentially leaves the customer with a really great experience and leads them through it. And that leads to once you understand that, then health scoring and um, sort of measuring like both from the revenue side, um, like what we talked about today with like retention rates, but also yeah. customer health of um, and being able to see at each stage, like is the customer in, in good health? Yeah. Um, and once you can measure that, then you can create playbooks where you can react to uh, these things that you see in, in the scoring and in your data to, to actually improve the data. Feedback loops are really important for that, being able to you know, like um, have surveys at the right uh, points in time that are automated, talking to your customers, and that ultimately then helps you to achieve realistic metric goals. Yeah, uh, no, I think that's uh, that's a great uh, example of how you make an impact on your revenue uh, by doing these uh, operational things and measuring them. And uh, I think when you have good health scoring, you will see that you're on the right track. You, you succeed with onboarding, you su succeed with adoption plans, and uh, 
And then you will see it eventually also in an improved uh, retention rate and a uh, lower churn. Um, so I think that's, uh, that's, that's where both our platforms also complement each other, uh, where you have a really revenue subscription analytics um, platform in Chart Mogul and you have an operational platform in Start Deliver. And with, with our corporation also, if there's any customers out there on our Start Deliver customers that would like to try out Chart Mogul or, or vice versa, uh, it's very easy to get going with that, and uh, we have a close cooperation there that you uh, can try the things out if you like. We're actually on the hour here now. Uh, we'll keep the time. Um, let us know if you have any questions. You have our contact details. We will share all the, all the material to you. Uh, and thanks a lot, Ingmar, and thanks everyone for listening in. And I uh, hope to see you all soon. It's a pleasure. All, all the best. All the best. Ciao, ciao.